Another new day has come, and we heard quite interesting news that the rogue couple Sussex is facing bankruptcy. That was a pretty reasonable explanation when the Arkewell employees abandoned them one by one. And later in the video, we also analyze Meghan's inappropriate behavior when breaking the royal family's rule of not receiving free gifts. Once again, I am delighted to see you on the Royal News 365 channel. Six months ago, I posted about the Sussexes' impending cash crunch. At that point, I estimated that they were going to have a serious cash crisis sometime between mid-year 2024 and year-end 2025. They have no revenue-generating activities on the horizon, and their reputation is in shambles, so they're toast. Between Harry's quixotic legal pursuits and Meg's need to defend against Samantha's lawsuit, I think they're blowing through cash even faster than I had projected. It's not a coincidence that they were manifesting a reconciliation with the British royal family and moving to Kensington Palace in recent months. And now, according to a new rumor, Meghan Markle and her dim-witted husband, Harry, are in a big money crunch so are choosing to not renew the contracts of people who know what they are doing, because those deals cost the most. To replace them, they have brought in at least one intern from college who they can pay minimum wage rather than mid-six figures. Not renewing contracts is a clapback about how many staff have left them. Harkles think they are clever getting in first to blame inefficient staff for their woes. If I were the people leaving, I would be removing anything alluding to the Harkles off my CV. So effectively what the Harkles are saying is that their previous employees whom they paid big money to and have left did not what they were doing. Here goes that it's not us but everyone else's fault that we are not successful. Maybe they need to look at themselves, so many people leaving maybe the Harkles are the problem. But the problem now is, this is what I'm always saying. What is the purpose of all those PR moments? I don't think it's getting CEOs of mega companies to want to sign them to million dollar contracts, because none have so far. James Holt had been with them since Sussex Royal split from the Royal Foundation. He megxited with them and ended up on both the Arkewell and Travelist boards that first year. Let me translate professionals will no longer take their abuse, so now they pay someone ten dollars per hour who will. Let's just say, I don't think Gen Z will take their bullshit for very long before they put these two on blast. But Gen Z does not work off hours, meaning Meg won't be able to bother them at four or five in the morning with the demands of the day. In fact, the minimum wage in California is $16 per hour, but that might be more than they are willing to pay someone. Maybe looking for an intern who Megan can train. Sadly... I'm not sure, but anyone with any knowledge will not be willing to work for them for any less than $16. Assistants working in Montecito for celebrities can make quite a lot of money if they're good at the job. Back in the day, you could be hired at an hourly wage, but the more overtime you worked, the less you got paid in overtime hours. It was inappropriately and wrongly called working Chinese overtime. I think our Megs would be a fan. As the entire concept insinuated, the worker was to blame for having to work more hours, whether there was staff to work 40 her weeks or not. Moreover, these Gene Z heirs love pulling off a good gossipy expose on social media too, as calling everyone out is seen by this Gene as a badge of honor. The un-Sussexfuls paying young people a shitty wage during a cost-of-living crisis when they live in a dead Russian oligarch's McMansion, do zero public service, have one-hair work weeks, are perpetually knifed, and have unearned royal inheritance is not a good look at all. It's the epitome of nepoch adult behavior. Madam better not pull one of her hot tea throwing tantrums, and has better keep his hands and racist behavior to himself. I can't wait for the tables to be turned on these talentless hack-fucking grifters. They thought they could court the attention of Gen Z, and they're definitely going to. But for all the Yang reasons. Plus, no self-respecting intern would produce that crap. And imagine having Archuel on your CV. Career killer, I would have thought. 
unless they've got their eye on a job at one of those supermarket magazines that publishes my mother, is an alien who's a secret agent for the Russian stories. Archwell internship might be a good grounding for that, I suppose. As they aren't listening to the sort of staff that would know what they are doing, and always think they know best they can just as well overrule and ride roughshod over the more cost-efficient rookies. So, according to this, they've hired someone who is green to the business for them to bully and scream at. Everyone your prayers are needed for this poor kid. She only wants people to copy-paste her emails onto social media sites, an intern would suffice to do that. She handles all the rest, like strategy, meetings, directing, producing, editing, etc. That's one way to teach young uns some valuable life lessons. It will be fun to see who Marbles hires. I imagine we won't be seeing any young, pretty blondes. Frequently, interns are not paid at all. It sounds like these two grifters sell working for them as a benefit to the victims. I mean, potential employees as great experience for which they don't need a salary. But, curious, how much do they pay the cult squad? I'd be surprised if they lay anything. They'll probably say that being in their presence is more valuable than a paycheck, and Marbles will promise to gift her stuff. The movie industry, in general, has the it doesn't pay well, but will look good on your resume tactics. So many people are trying to get a break in the industry, they will take anything they can to get some experience. I wonder if they use undocumented workers so they can simultaneously play the savior card while also threatening them with deportation any time they dare speak up for themselves. Then, they will get caught up in a domestic labor exploitation scandal, and everything about their working personalities will become public and they will be utterly reprehensible. So, I don't think Archwell pays the wages, and it's allegedly got a few million left in it. The staff are leaving because they are terrible employers, and in their deluded heads, they think it makes them look like victims because they are so poor, they can only employ interns. The nasty royal family cut them off. The staff quit not the contract, not renewed, this is a distraction from they are awful, awful people to their employees. They have cash in Archwell Foundation, but legally they can only pay salaries to the people working for the foundation with those funds. The other Archwell employees, audio and production companies, can't be paid by the foundation. The salaries of the Sussex's personal assistants, housekeepers, cooks, nannies, gardeners, pool guys, and security detail can't be paid by the foundation. I assumed this was the staff they were talking about in the blind since they said they can no longer afford the people who know what they are doing because they cost the most. I assumed most household staff wouldn't be under contract. Particularly yearly ones, that's why I assumed it was Archwell. It just seemed odd they lost yet another employee, and the next day, they're a blind out suggesting another reason for staff to have left. They want to outlay minimum money and no doubt expect them to do the job off several people and probably expect them to go outside of their job description when the demand is made. Like security going on coffee runs, we heard about staff getting five and emails and phone calls when they are clicked off having dinner so she can demand and scream at them. She thinks if she pays you, she owns you and you are always answerable to her. She's an appalling bully. The high turnover tells us as much as the gossip does. I'm sure the smaller-scale staff like maintenance, etc., have an even higher rate of resignation, or job abandonment. But I'm sure they pay themselves as much as they possibly can. A lot of these charities and foundations have COs pulling in mid to upper six figures. This is how it is in business and non-profits. Any money being made by the staff means less money for the COs and owners. Looking for the fact, most of us, and our children and our children's children, could have had a wonderful rest of our lives on the amount of money those two have pissed away on crap, like PR in a couple of short years. Keep talking, Harry. Midst of a cost of living crisis, high fuel bills. Even people who were neutral about you will start to dislike you. Don't whinge when you can't come back and do public engagements because you're so unpopular. You did it to yourself. 
Harry could have had a very easy life in the royal family compared to what he's up to now. He certainly doesn't seem happier. And I would argue that he seemed happier before meeting that woman. He has no one to blame but himself, though, because he didn't have to marry her. If she cried racism, it couldn't be any worse than his anti-Semitic costume, and Buckingham Palace or Kensington Palace would have cleaned it up for him. Now, Harry is finding out exactly how experienced the Palace PR team is at cleaning up after him. He's going to have to deal with the African Park scandal by himself. The Palace isn't giving him work to make him look good to the public, so what is he working at now besides playing polo? Unfortunately, he blames the British royal family. He will say they knew it was a bad situation and hid it. That he did not know. That they found it for him. They made him look bad. He could have had made a lot of money sitting on boards of various companies. There are so many things these two could have done to have an easy, wealthy life. But their, her, need for adulation ruined them at every step. Meanwhile, as I said at the beginning of this video, Meghan broke the palace protocol by accepting freebies, as revealed by her husband Harry. She was always trying to abscond with freebies, recall then Charles, Prince of Wales's 70th birthday party, when the dimwits were escorted out for whatever reason someone had given her a little something, which, on her way out, a staffer was at the ready to take it, Mrs. Dimwit making a kind of exaggerated drop of the gift bag into the awaiting staffer's hands. I've always wondered what the backstory was. Distributed them among staff doesn't change the fact she accepted freebies, which is a big no-no for the royal family. She's so shameless. And for such ugly jewelry, too. Wasn't it Camilla Tomine who said that Meghan instructed that the Wales children weren't allowed to be given any? Can you imagine putting the staff in that position, and not only because they're kids, but it was highly likely William or Catherine would find out, and the staff might say it was Meghan? Otherwise, they look bad. But then it could cause more issues between the staff and the Sussex. In fact, blindsiding people, whether it is pushing in front of the Queen and entering vehicles and rooms first, stepping up to a podium and grabbing a microphone, crashing an event or party invited to, stirring up conflicts by painting herself as generous to break protocol, is her modus operandi. And control. She always wants to be the ringmaster of the circus, or magician, in the spotlight and stuns, attempts to hurt or shock those around her in her audience as control to keep them in their place while elevating herself. Can you imagine how toxic the atmosphere is around her and how exhausting it must be to be around her or on her radar as a target? I said this earlier, but via Harry's own words, you can see the setup. She always has an out, unfortunately. The damage and negative impact she has is astonishing. More people are seeing through her, thankfully, but it's taken some time. Terrifying and often ends up sad for those who have to cross paths with the Duchess of Unsuccessful. It must feel like being in the eye of a hurricane until you can escape out of it. I read about it somewhere. Supposedly she got nearly everything she wanted from her parents. I read about her dad telling her no in regard to some vindictive act she wanted him to take, as an extension of herself, at her school, and thankfully he refused. I'm sure she picked over everything she was sent and whatever didn't fit, because she clearly has never used a tailor to adjust anything to fit. Or, she didn't like she moved on, such is the generosity of our saint. So does anyone actually believe that that woman would give her staff anything? No. That woman does not have a previous history of behaving generously, but rather being on the stingy, selfish side of interactions with colleagues, staff, and relations, she is all about receiving rather than giving. The staff would have been stressed by this dilemma and reported each breach to their supervisors, and it would have had to be dealt with discreetly in each circumstance. Of course, she may have told the hairless one that she had passed on freebie tokens to after some staff or his recollection, and understanding may have been completely off-target. Not only is she absolutely spiteful and selfish, 
and 100% unlikely to share with those she deems beneath her, practically everybody in the world, but wouldn't the palace-slash-office staff know the rules? She took the ones she wanted and then gave the staff the leftovers. I'm sure I read that. How flipping cheap! Never mind they shouldn't have been accepted in the first place. She had no clue, did she? Just saw the free stuff and grabbed it. While she had a huge amount of money spent on her wardrobe anyway by Charles. So money-grubbing and classless. She assumed it was her lifetime meal ticket to free stuff. Her idea of being a princess was being a Hollywood a lister. Sadly for her, she didn't get either. The hustle is so ingrained in her personality that she can't stop. Remember when they accepted that bike for their son in Montecito? A bike they could easily afford? She can't help herself and her narcissism compels her to think she deserves it all because she's above everyone and everything in rules. People like her are a dime a dozen. I was once told by a stylist if you wear a cheap outfit with an expensive bag, people will immediately assume the bag is fake. Invest in good quality pieces and you will go far. I never forgot it. Harry doesn't buy her anything. I can't really blame him after she went and changed the engagement ring that he designed and continues to wear the Cartier love bracelet from Trevor. Both are bitch moves. The amount of narc joy she has from that must be immense, rubbing it in his face day after day. I have zero sympathy for Harry. But goodness me, she's not hiding her behavior. He only has to open his beady little eyes. And I don't have the most fashionable taste, but I thought it was a lovely ring, and he clearly put some thought into it. I would have loved to see his face when she redesigned it. Do we think she just did it without telling him, and she just showed him the new version one day? Or did she tell him ahead of time while twisting the reason to blame him for why she needed to update it? It just occurred to me that she had input in the ring design before the engagement. In the engagement interview, Harry said he chose yellow gold because Meghan likes it, meaning he would have known what type of center stone, cut, and overall look she would enjoy. I'm sure he had her preferences in mind when he commissioned the ring. She probably didn't articulate her genuine desire that it be completely bedazzled and have a center stone as big as a doorknob. If she did, he blew it big time. It might have been meaningful to him, but her original ring was pretty run-of-the-mill. She couldn't even hide her displeasure during the farce of an engagement interview. However, she didn't do it any favors with her improvements either. The fact is, the ring's design was pretty conventional, but the provenance of the gold as well as the diamonds gave it so much significance, or would have for 99% of people, that would have made it special for most. So, until that liar comes forward with factual proof or some former staff who would thus be the only ones not bullied steps forward to confess breaching their employment contract, Harry and Meghan are not to be believed. Dreadful, tawdry woman she was on the grift from the moment she got past the palace gates. Anyone normal would have acknowledged that playing your cards right and being decent would end up with a standard of gracious living that most of us can only dream of. But no, from day one, she was on the grift, always making a turn. From designer dresses, jewelry, whatever. Always on the grift. What a complete mare of a creature. No wonder the likes of Sophie and Catherine kept her far away. Only the grassy Eugenie felt any kinship. The more I learn about the dubious duo, the more that I blame Queen Elizabeth and Charles for the behavior of the duo, and especially Harry before meeting Meghan, to hell with the potential for racism claims. If they had put the duo in their place and made them stick to the rules, then they would not be in this mess today. And you? Do you agree with my opinions in this video? Let me know your thoughts in the comments, and let's discuss Meghan and Harry together. Don't forget to click the like and subscribe button so you don't miss any new videos from Royal News 365. That's also part of YouTube's algorithm for videos like mine to spread. Thanks for watching, goodbye, and see you in the next video.